Bruce not only our sergeant of arms, he's also our video master of a brand new role. So Tim's already becoming quite an important person for this group, and I'm very happy uh, to have him here for that reason. He is giving a speech today called uh, a, healthy, a Healthy Heart, and I, I assume it has to do with eating for half, but we'll see. Uh, CC uh, number two again, five to seven minutes. So let's welcome up Tim Wong with A Healthy Heart. Professor, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests. Today, uh, this year is 2011. Under the Chinese calendar, it is uh, the year of rabbit, which means, uh, for the Chinese calendar anyways, it's supposed to be a prosperous year. Very successful in finances, uh, great in other successful parts of our lives. But it was not so prosperous or uh, too so back in 2009 in regards to our finances. A lot of people foreclosed, bankrupt, uh, because the main cause, 60% of all the bankruptcies, was health bills. And what is the number one cause amongst the health problems? Health disease. So today I'm going to talk about how to prevent health problems, or health disease alone. And I'm sorry for you guys eating, this might be a little bit, but I have. before the topic came up, this is, the, this is why I wanted to talk about this. So I'm going to go through two things. The two main common causes that you guys will understand of how heart problems evolve and also how to prevent them. First off, carbohydrates. I notice everyone's eating bread. I know when everyone hears carbs, they go, oh, carbs, i got to watch my carbs. Oh, I've got to fear carbs. Run away from the carbs. But it's okay. Carbs are actually necessary for the body, for the mind, for the muscles to use. And after the body only uses only half the carbs we take in. And afterwards, it stores in our liver and our muscles for excess use for later on the energy. But overabundance of carbs will actually spike your blood sugar. And because of that, over time, if you don't take proper caution, it makes your blood syrupy, thicker, and it decreases the circulation in your body, suffocating your muscles, especially your heart. The next thing I want to go through is uh, cholesterol. Now, cholesterol comes from animal fats. For vegetarians and vegans, it's kind of easier to avoid. And you can just, you know, like, OK, no meat. But for those who eat meat and animal byproducts, cholesterol is also not bad for you, just under certain proportions. As long as you eat properly, you're fine. The liver produces enough cholesterol for you naturally that you don't have to worry about eating so much. Actually. Scientists say if you don't eat meat, it's fine. Your liver produces enough for you to survive it anyways. The reason why we eat cholesterol, or naturally produce it, is to produce vitamin D, which is good for your skin, for, uh, to recreate cell walls for you know, scar tissue, uh, proper hormones for your body, and also bile. What is bile, you might say? No, this is the most crucial part of your body. It is a toxic chemical in your body, but it's necessary to digest fat. Without that, you wouldn't have, you know, be big. Bile actually is created in the liver and stored in the gallbladder, and there it sits. Now, keep that in mind because I'm going to get to that point later. Just remind it just sits there, and it is used to burn off fat. Cholesterol also, if it's too accessible, it leaves plaques in the blood. It blocks the blood over time. Mamalia, mamalia, five to six car, car pile up on the freeway. You know how traffic gets when that happens. Imagine that being blocked in your quarter arteries, in your heart. Over time, it just blocks it. So if you're eating a lot of carbs and cholesterol, not only is your blood being syrupy, but your bloodstream is being blocked. That's suffocating your heart. So that's the main number one cause. Now how do we prevent this as far as carbs go? Well, lots of dairy and fiber. When you look at your packages and your food, you see carbohydrates and your dietary fiber. If your dietary fiber is higher than the carbs, that is very ideal. What it does is carbs slows down the car uh, sorry, fiber slows down the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates in simple terms is sugar for your body. So what the fiber does is slow down the sugar absorbent inside your body. So that way your body has time to uh, digest it, 
process it, and that way it can just go evenly out to the necessary organs, your muscles, and out the door. Uh, how to prevent cholesterol? Well, you know, for negative vegetarians, it's quite easy just to just avoid it. Uh, but also, just when you substitute your butter, I know a lot of people like their butter, and it tastes really good. <laughs> Believe me, I was, a, I was a fan of butter back in the day with, you know, uh, uh, cheese bread, you know, any, any kind of uh, uh, spaghetti meal. I always put butter in there. But I learned that butter itself is the main cause of heart attacks over time. Over time, because I kill you instantly. But you want to substitute that with olive oil. I'm going to tell you the main reason why you want to do this is virgin olive oil. Virgin olive oil has two different great good fats. Cholesterol is what we would call an LDL, low density lipoprotein, is a very bad fat. And because of that, it's like I told you, it blocks your arteries over time. The two good fats in virgin olive oil that counteract it, um, they're called HDL, high density lipoproteins. They're good fats. And what that does is they don't get stuck in your thing. They flush out all the bad stuff. Think of uh, Drano in your drains. It flushes out all the clogness in your, in your drains. So it helps you circulate that out. They're good fats. Uh, mono, uh, mono saturated fats you can find in fish, like salmon and uh, soy nuts. Polysaturated fat, secondary to monosaturated fat, can be found in most nuts and other materials. Uh, that are not animal protein. So why I talk about this healthy heart? Well, my, my relatives, they have uh, a lot of heart problems. I see them eating and eating and eating. And it saddens me to see this. I just got to discuss with the rest of you because I'm sure that you guys all have retirement funds. I'm sure you guys have great profit sharing, 401ks, that you don't really want to spend at the medical bill. I got an accident last week, and that was an hospital. And I saw a whole line of people because of heart problems and being sick. I'm like, what would be great if I could bring awareness to you guys? That you guys can still have the food you have, but there's so many other foods to counteract it, so that way you don't want to spend all your money on medical bills. How many people here like spending money on their medical bills? How many people want to spend their retirement funds on medication? Not me. I realized that 